What's up guys, welcome back to Golf Simulator Videos. We're back with another incredible video today because this is part two to this Golf Simulator build. Part one, I actually take you through a full unboxing of what you see here today. This is the Foresight Sports Sim in a Box Eagle Plus package that comes with a GC Quad. All right, so make sure you check out part one if you haven't seen it. I take you through a full unboxing. We show you how everything arrives and every single component that comes in this box and how it's all packaged up. We talk about some details, but this one is going to be awesome because we're actually going to show you a full time lapse of how I did this golf simulator build all by myself, all right? So that's coming up in just a second. Then I'm gonna grab the camera and we're going to do a detailed look of how this looks, you know, kind of behind, talk about some different things about the enclosure, uh, things that I like, you know, things to point out that you should understand about everything. And then we're going to do some demonstration shots. We'll hit iron, driver. I'm even gonna show you putting because it's unique when you're using a camera system like this. You don't have to worry about a long, smooth, or level roll because it's only reading, you know, a foot or two of that ball rolling. So we're gonna give you all those demonstrations in this video coming up. Now make sure you subscribe to the video, comment below any questions you have. Let me know what you think of this. All right, I love those comments down below. Anything that you can think of, anything I can answer, make sure you put that in the comments. And also, if you're looking to build your own home golf simulator, make sure you shoot me an email. Doesn't matter what components you're looking for, an entire package, even a commercial golf simulator, maybe just a launch monitor or a few of the other components, shoot me an email. I wanna make sure you're getting the best information and pricing. I'll put that in the top of the comments and also in the description. All right, but let's go ahead and get started. I think first thing first, let's take a look at the time lapse so I can show you guys how I did this home golf simulator build all by myself. Take a look. All right, guys, so the first thing I did was I grabbed all of the enclosure pieces and I laid them out appropriately. They're all color coded, so it makes it nice. You just match up the color dots together and you're able to use an Allen wrench and just secure them with some bolts that are included. Got my ladder, obviously extended those pieces up top. Might be easier for two people, but threw the turf down, got that mesh screen up in the back and then put the real screen up and wrapped it in all of the necessary padding and carpet and finishes assembled the fiber built mat and then got that computer card together hooked up the computer and the projector and then pretty much after that i was hitting my first practice shot and everything was good to go all right guys welcome back i really hope you enjoyed that time lapse of how i did this golf simulator build all by myself, just one person. So now let's take a closer look at all of the components and quality and details of the Foresight Sports Sim in a Box Eagle Plus package. Let's start off right over here at the included computer cart. I do have uh, an, that HP desktop gaming computer down at the bottom, even an included surge protector. We talked about that in our unboxing video, but look how simple the wiring is. You have a power cable, an HDMI cable, and I have the USB cable running to the quad. That's it, so it's just so simple of a setup. And then you have that Eki projector we were talking about that, you know, right now I have these T5 high bay lights on in my garage and they're super bright. I wanted you know, to have those on for the camera quality, but look how nice of an image we're, we're still getting out of this projector. Um, you know, it's, it's a quality image, nice and sharp, and very bright. Yeah, we obviously we'll show you some images with it off as well, but I wanted to show you guys that it's plenty acceptable to have all my lights on and it still puts out a very good image. So uh, other than that, up here on the computer cart, obviously the remote to the projector, and then you also have an included wireless keyboard, which is nice because it has an included mouse pad so you can control everything uh, right from here. And that gaming computer with that 1660 uh, Ti Super is doing great because it's only running one screen at 16 by 10 resolution. All right, so um, it's doing great. You'll see how smooth the images and everything are here in just a minute. So here's that fiber built hitting mat. And maybe we'll do a separate review just on this, you know, kind of showing you guys the details, but it's cool. It takes a, a real tee if you want to use it. Um, I tend to use kind of the plastic or, you know, form tees, but um, it can take a real tee if you want that. And then you have your GC quad just running the power cable and the USB. All right, does come with, uh, with club data with this package. And then the turf that's included, I found it 
really nice to have two pieces. Um, so if you wanted to, you could really get this seam to kind of disappear. I mean, I built this entire setup in about, you know, two and a half hours or so. So if you really wanted to, obviously you could vacuum this, get it looking really, really nice, but I find it actually very acceptable just the way it is. But let's talk about the, the you know, details of the enclosure. All right, so when you're doing a, a golf simulator build, especially like a DIY home golf simulator build, obviously the enclosure is a key component. Now this one has a lot of nice material. See how this is like carpet? Um, it just looks higher end. Uh, you know, obviously if a ball hits it, it's gonna absorb it. It does fit really nice. They have this kind of upper padding up top that Velcro's in. And then you can see how everything is pretty flush right to the screen and image. I didn't spend a ton of time uh, doing the keystone correction and everything on the projector. And for where I have it set off to the side, I have it you know, very acceptable in my opinion. I mean, I have no issues with the way it looks right now. Um, I will say that the screen material, and I'll see if I can actually get down close, is relatively thin. All right, but they do have this kind of you know, net layer behind it. I'm assuming that this is a relatively affordable replaceable screen, um, but it's not a super thick material. I kind of do a close up if I can of it, um, if I can get it to focus. But you can see that's pretty thin material, so uh, kind of report back on how that you know, holds up long term, but I I'm sure it's, you can get a replacement that just Velcro's on, pretty simple. So let's show you the back really quick. First off, the sides, they do have nice finishes. This is like a felt material um, that just Velcro's right on. Obviously, you could clean that all up. Like I said, I mean, I just got done building this thing, um, and it was just over two and a half hours. I didn't want to spend more time uh, doing any cleanup. But look how nice and clean it is. This is that uh, blackout panel that I talked about in the unboxing video that is so important. When you have windows or a ton of light coming in, this stops washout on the screen. And then it also makes it look really nice from behind. And then you can see where I have the turf set up and there's your enclosure brackets coming through the back. Uh, where I have that turf set up with those two pieces leaves me about a little over 10 feet ball to screen, which I find a very comfortable distance, okay? Um, but let's go ahead and dive right in. We're gonna do some example shots, all right? Driver, iron, putting, all that with multiple software, not just FSX 2020, but also the new FSX Play. Let's have a look. All right, guys, welcome back. Let's show you what this thing is all about. So we're set up for just an eight iron, 160 yard shot. I wanna show you guys, you know, kind of what the bounce back is like from the screen. Um, the mat I find actually, you know, reasonably forgiving, but is gonna give you that true to life. If you chunk it, um, you're not just gonna be able to blow right through it, you know? So it's kind of nice having that balance. I think this fiber built does that. Um, but we'll talk about some other things along the way. All right, so let's just fire off an eight iron really quick so you guys can see what this is like, kind of how the graphics are with the gaming computer and everything along those lines. Oh, I struck that so well. If every shot could just be like that. Just a little left, all right. But a really nice eight iron, good spin on it. Nice strike, felt good. Um, that's like a full carry out of it, One, 160. Um, everything about that I like. So good example, you notice the ball kind of rolled back slowly, just kind of stopped at the front of this rubber front of the fiber built. I mean, I think that's perfect. Uh, let's hit one more with an iron and then we'll switch to driver. Another good strike. Let's see where that one's gonna be. Oh man. I'll tell you what, after two and a half hours of building this thing, if I could just, uh, maybe that's the trick. I need to wear myself out and loosen up before I take some swings. Let's switch to driver though and see how that is. I haven't even swung a driver yet today. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk right over to my cart. It has this touch pad built right in. I'm just gonna scroll over. Uh, I do have that double tap to click, so you gotta be a little careful on that. Um, but really just change it to 325 yards. And then I'm gonna grab my tee. Like I said, this, this mat actually does allow for full tees, but I just kind of like using these uh, molded ones. I think that they're you know easier. And then it's nice having that little line in the mat to show you where center is. Um, and then the way I'm set up, just so you guys know, about a foot or two away from the wall gives me plenty of room 
all right, to clear a driver. And then you could play right or left handed as well. I tell everyone all the time, if you're doing a golf simulator build, all right, especially like a home DIY golf simulator build, you know, room size is really the place to start. Obviously budget's gonna be important, but room size is really gonna tell you what's going to work, all right, depending on if you're talking enclosure size or even type of launch monitor. Um, I find that something like this, like those ideal room sizes, about 15 feet wide, 20 feet long, maybe a nine to 10 foot ceiling, depending on what you're working with. Those are all like ideal sizes in my opinion. So um, let's see if we can hit a driver. And then what we'll do is I think we'll move to FSX Play, show you guys what that's all about. But notice the smooth graphics coming from that HP gaming computer. Oh, like I said, haven't swung a driver yet today. And that sure showed it. All right, where'd my tee go? And I can make another swing here. Oh, it went flying somewhere. That was not the best. Not the best at all. I didn't pay attention to where my tee was flying. But let's find it really quick. All right. And let's make another driver swing that's better. All right. I think I can smooth that out a little bit. <sighs> Much better. I don't like the duck hook on the first tee. It's not fun. That was a pretty good strike. I got really good carry out of it. Ball speed was 165. A little spinny because I felt like it was a little bit low on the face. So, um, you know, carried 281. Um, 165 ball speed though, an okay launch angle for considering I hit it a little low off the face. So, but notice that the ball is only coming back, you know, it's pretty slow, honestly. Um, it's not bad at all. I'll hit one more so you guys have a good idea. And then from there, what we'll do is uh, make sure that that's all clear there. All right, we'll go over to FSX Play. Whew, man, I hit that well. Just had to get war warmed up there a little bit. 168 ball speed. That's more like it with lower spin. I love, I'll tell you what, I told everybody when I switched to that Ventus Black and the Sim 2, it's just, it's right for me when I got fit. Um, my numbers, I mean, I've been getting to one, you know, just shy of 170. I got 169 so far, but look where, look where the ball ends up from 168 mile per hour ball speed. So, um, all right, so this is FSX 2020. We've shown you guys iron, we've shown you driver. Now I'm gonna switch over to FSX play, and I'm even gonna show you guys putting, all right? And we'll take a little deeper dive look at things, so stay tuned, let's switch to FSX play. All right guys, so welcome back. We're here with FSX Play. This is the all new golf simulator software from Foresight Sports, and why not show you Torrey Pines, famous course, a lot of you probably know. This is number three. Par three, really, really cool course. Kind of see San Diego back in the background. But you know, it's also a cool opportunity to practice. And that's what I want to show you. I turned the lights off. You'll notice it's very different because I wanted to allow the projector to shine. That way you guys can really see what the true image looks like. Most of the time in this setup, what you would do is, is you would just grab kind of a small light just to hang right over top for your hitting area. I don't have one. I mean, we've only been you know working on this for under three hours. So um, you just have a nice little highlight or you might become the way I am. It's actually pretty well lit in here. You probably can't see from the camera, but the projector puts off a lot of light. So it just depends on what you're looking for, but a nice little overhead light is something that, that is great. So this is a cool shot for me to practice. It's 160 yards, but it's 50 feet downhill. That means I probably only need to carry this about 150 uh, yards. So I'm going to work on kind of like a soft fade with my eight iron and we'll see what I can do. Show you guys how that HP gaming PC performs with FSX Play. See the graphics and obviously, you know, the lumens from that projector. It's, uh, it's a nice and sharp image as well. Not too bad. I tried to hit that little fade, but it's going to probably be a little bit to the right. Yeah, I'm going to need to <clears throat> almost set up with a, an aim to the left if I'm going to work it like that. But that was the shot. I mean, that's probably pin high. All right, so let's work this thing a little more left to right. Yeah, so when you're using that 1920 uh, by 1200 image, 
um, you're getting you know, technically a higher resolution than 1080p. Um, and you can see how crisp that is. Thought it'd be a perfect opportunity to shut the lights off. And then we'll, what we'll do is we'll kick the lights back on and I'll show you guys putting before we wrap things up here. There we go. Just a tiny little fade. I hope it's not too far. Oh, just a little too far, but a perfect example. I mean, just a great opportunity to sit out here on a famous course and practice something like that. Um, really, really cool. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn the lights on really quick and I'll show you guys putting. I'm gonna even talk about my new putter that I have um, because I've hit a blade forever and I actually have made the switch. So while I switch out to do some putting, I'll talk a little bit about that. So uh, face control has just been a little bit of a challenge for me lately. I've hit a blade putter forever and now I've switched to this Cobra mallet with the sick face. And I'll be honest with you, I really like it. I think that I'm uh, kind of improving my putting little by little. Obviously, you know, practice is what really is gonna tie things together. Um, but I'm very, very happy so far. So kind of switching things up. So let's go out to the Paris range really quick and I'll show you how I can just practice, you know, simple like 15 foot putts with this. So I'll show you guys this putter really quick. There it is. Got the sick face on it. All right, pretty wild looking putter. Has the super stroke grip. But anyways, what you wanna do is, is just go right up here to more. And I have coverage guys for both these pieces of software. If you wanna see either of them, just you know, jump in the channel and look for FSX Play or look for FSX 2020. And I go through a lot of them, on course play, everything. And we'll do some more videos with the Foresight Sports Sim in a Box as well. So stay tuned for those as we do some other coverage. But let's go ahead and just set up. This is a 16 foot four inch putt. And you know, it's really nice, I'm dead center. Let's see if I can actually work that face control like I want to. This is really good practice. And I wanted to show you guys, I pulled that putt. I knew it. Um, you can just see it could take off to the left. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, what's so amazing is, is that you don't have to worry about having like that perfectly level, smooth, you know, situation because this camera system is reading it in probably a little over a foot window. So, uh, you know, you're still getting very precise reads. All right, I need to set up better here because I, I just could feel that I, I pulled that right away. That was a pretty good putt there. There it is. I like those cup physics, how the ball goes in the hole like that, but just the perfect opportunity to practice putting. And you can see when it comes off the mat, it actually rolls really nice on this turf. So you're gonna see where the ball is. I could see that first one was to the left and I could see that the next one was tracking really well. So good example of putting. I mean, we did irons, we did driver. I showed you guys FSX play in 2020 and there's even more software that I'll probably go over with the Foresight Sports Sim in a Box Eagle Plus package that we've done a full review of today. So like I said guys, another amazing DIY home golf simulator build. I can't wait to hear what everybody has to say. This has been fun. I mean, I didn't think that it was gonna be as, quite as easy as it was since this is a, you know, a pretty large enclosure and a tall enclosure. But I, like I said, I got it done in about two and a half hours. And that was including uh, setting up this cart, the computer cart, which you know took a few minutes to do. So I have that in the time lapse you see as well. But love to know what kind of questions that you guys have. And like I said, please reach out to me if you're looking to purchase your own home golf simulator or any golf simulator components at all, whether it be at home or commercial. Shoot me an email, I'll pin it to the top of the comments and put it in the description. As always, I really appreciate you guys watching. Stay tuned for a lot more.